Welcome back to Reading Java Code. There's been a change from the previous video. We will not be going to module seven at this time. We will now write a program. Well, I will anyway. Uh, you could if you want to follow along, but uh, I will be writing a program that calc two numbers, uh, calculates two numbers, and we're gonna call the program calc two numbers. Uh, I'm going to introduce some things that we have not talked about so you'll understand what they look like and what they're doing. And I will use these things to also talk about other concepts like objects and um, methods. Um, I'm going to introduce uh, the input where we get input from the actual user instead of hard coding variables like I've been doing. Because what we've been doing, I would assign a value like with the age and the maximum age. Every time we want to run the program, I had to go in and change the actual variable of his age from 12 to 15, if you remember. So then I'm going to introduce a method, a function. Again, like I said, the only difference between a method and a function is a method is part of a class, which is object-oriented programming, again, which, which is beyond the scope of this series. Uh, but just so you know, and a function is a function that can only be seen within itself. Uh, so. I'm going to introduce two functions, and I'm going to introduce return a return value. So basically, when you have a method, a method can do something, and basically it can do one thing, and a method should probably do no more than one thing at a time, and then return a value or some value or be responsible for printing, because I may even do a third function. So we'll see. But anyway, uh, I need the whole 12 minutes that's left for this, this video to get this program all written out and explained to you. Okay, so I'm going to bring up NetBeans and we're going to get started. Here we are in NetBeans. Let me create a new project and we're going to call that a Java project. It's going to be a Java application. So we click next and we're going to give it a name. Like I said, I'm going to call it Calc Two Numbers, is what we're going to call it. I'm going to let it create my main class for me and I'm going to continue on. We're now presented with a blank slate. Uh, we have a package. The author is me, of course and we have our main class so let's get started what i like to do is this i like to to develop my template first and since i know the two functions i want to use i will go ahead and just put the the shell there and it's going to take a return value since I don't know what I'm going to define that value as, I just put a zero there now to get rid of the error message. If you notice, if you try to create a method or a function that has a return value, which is this, without having a return value, it will tell you missing return statement. Pay attention to this error. It will always place the error nearest to where the error should be. And the return statement should always be the last statement in the method. Uh, I didn't explain this before, and I'll explain it now. Void means nothing is being returned. It is a, a method that does something and it doesn't need to pass anything back. So there's no need. You have to tell what type of value is going to be passed back. But here we're going to be passing back an integer because we're going to be calculating two numbers. And it's going to be integers. We're not going to deal with floats or doubles here. So what I do as a placeholder for right now until I figure out what my variable is, I do this. And, and then I'm going to have yet another method. Again, it's static because it's contained in the main class. Uh, so therefore, this other one, adding two numbers, we're going to have a, a method that calculates these two numbers for us and returns them to us. So add two numbers is what I'm going to call this function a method. And since I know, again, we got to, in essence, trick the IDE believe that there's a value there so we can turn zero for now since we're going to calculate two numbers we know that two numbers are required you have to define the value of the two numbers that are coming in you can't simply say num1 num2 you have to declare what these numbers or these are variables at this point you have to declare these variables so this method knows how to handle them so it says right there uh, expected identifier and what that simply means identify means it is expecting us to identify what these variables will be so we know they're going to be integers they're going to be whole numbers voila our error message goes away that is basically our framework 
to write this program. Again, this logic, this is going to be our logic or basically our um, application logic, yes, that will control this program. And it will call out to these methods when need be. So basically what we're going to do, I know that I need to have two values to get those two numbers that will be passed here. So basically what I know is this. I'm going to have number. Again, if I could spell. Number one is going to be equal to user input. Just like that. See? Now you're going to notice something that I'm going to I'm going to force it to error to create an error for the next one, so you can see why the identifier of the verbal type was so important. There we go. We got our two inputs, right? Now what I like to do is this. I like to write a little bit of code at a time, so I can test it, and then I can figure out where it breaks. So right now, if I run this, I should get nothing back, but I shouldn't get an error. Yeah, I got nothing. So I'm going to stop it from running. So now what I need to do inside here, you need to tell it what prompt you want. See, I didn't tell you that earlier. We have to define the prompt. So we're going to call this first number. Second number. You can only put a string in here. Oh, wow. Look at that. We have an error. Is that really an error? No, it really isn't an error. It really isn't an error. You know why we're getting this error message? I haven't told this here that we're going to do anything. See, I have to pass this string. Because remember, this is just a method. See, I did not create this, so now I got to tell it. I'm going to pass a string value, and we can call it string message or string prompt because that's all it really is look at that our error went went away because see when i took when i don't have this this has to coincide remember this is an identifier this is also the identifier you have to identify what will be passed in i got six minutes so let, let me get through this really quick so here we go um so now that we did that i have to now set this up so if i run it real quick now you'll see a prompt that won't do anything Nothing, because see, nothing is going here. It's, it's passing it, but we didn't tell it to do anything. That's okay, though. We're going to fix that problem right now. Here, I'm going to introduce a new concept. This is an object, and we're going to create another. We're going to create an object from scanner. I don't know if you remember, I talked about system in. We use system out a lot, but now we use system in because we're going to get information in and we're saying we want to create a new object of scanner type here. Scanner object. So you have to, again, identify the verbal just like here. An object can be an identifier. Scanner object. We want to make input a scanner object and it's going to be equal to new scanner object. So it will contain all the methods associated with scanner. And we can have multiple of these, but we won't do that here. So what we want to do now is tell us we got a problem. We don't have the scanner object library or access to it. So we have to tell it we want access to it. So we either click on it or we can type add import for this. And you know, some IDs do not have this, so we're going to type it the hard way. Java Utility Scan is what we need. So it's import Java Utility. Oh, it, it moved a little faster than I wanted to. Scanner. And yes, of course, we have to terminate. See, our error went away. We now have access to the scanner class or the scanner object and now we can do things with it so we want to create a prompt you know why because we passed our prompt right here 
Now we got to show our prompt to the user, and we simply say, S prompt. Now, you're probably thinking, what happened here? Oh, we're missing a parenthesis. We had to put the parenthesis there. So now, now that's taken care of. Now, the next thing we need to do, we can create an integer. See, this is going to be the integer that is passed back. So we can call it number one. We can call it num. Well, we'll just call it num. And what we want to do, we want to do input. See, we're going to use this object now, this variable now, that's an object. Hit the dot because we want the next integer. And the next integer is what we put in. And of course, we got to put that there. Now we're good to go. We could change this to, guess what? You got it. Num. We know what we're passing back now. So now if we run this, we'll get a prompt twice, but it won't do anything. So here we go. There's our first prompt. We can put a one and a one. All right. So let me quickly do this. Uh, we want to add the two numbers. We go integer total equal add two numbers. And you guess what those two numbers are. We're going to send it number one and number two. See, we're passing in values now. This is passing values in. These values have been passing. They're integers, and they're integers here. You see that? And we're going to say this. The total is like that. We got to now flush out this. We got our two values. We got integer total is equal to. Number one plus two, do that. Total. I got 50 seconds and counting. Here we go. We passed in the two values from here. See, we, we, we accept the input from these two right here. And then we take them here and we call this. This is a call to another method from this method. See, this is controlling all our logic. We called out to what we need. We called out to the input method, and then we called out to the add to number method. This makes our code more, more black box. So if we have an error, we just have to fix it here. We don't have to worry here. This makes it easier to follow. The two numbers go in, and I'm going to have to continue this in my next video to, to, to summarize this and finish it. See you in part two.